Holly Seacon, Associate Editor at GreenBiz here at GreenBiz Studio with Yama Siddiqui, the Vice President of Corporate Sustainability for MGM International Resorts. Thanks for being here today. You're welcome, Holly. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you doing? I'm well. So, what brings you to Verge 19? This is my first Verge. So, one, I just wanted to come because Verge is a great conference that does different things and addresses topics in a kind of unique way. And um, there's also a Verge Circularity uh, track, and I've been involved actively in that, specifically around food and circularity in food, what that means, how to do it, how to do it well. What is MGM working on in circular food right now? I think Vegas is not really known as a destination for good food waste management. In fact, in many ways, it's the opposite. Like people, when they think about Vegas, they think about you know, excess food and food waste. But in reality, because there's such a density of restaurants and banquets in the city, um, we, the main you know, hotel operators on the Strip, have really worked to figure it out and how to and, and implement programs, multiple programs, to manage food waste in a non-linear way. So if you know the circular, circular economy framework, we don't want to take, make, and waste. We want to, we take from the earth, then we make stuff, and we try and get it back in loops. And uh, that's what we've done a lot with, with food in multiple ways. And I can go into detail on any of them if you'd like. Sure, uh, you want to <coughs> highlight a few? So the city and MGM and others started working with a local uh, farm to aggregate all of our food scraps behind every hotel. And now MGM, for example, last year spent, sent 13,000 tons, 13,000 tons of food scraps um, to multiple sources, primarily still farms, so feeding animals with food scraps. So that's one of the, one of the main methods that the city, including MGM, uses to, to manage food waste, but there are many others keeping food and making sure that resources are as valuable as possible is super important. And I heard that MGM actually brought a new piece of technology that helps do that to Verge 19. Yeah, we did. So if you move up, there's a thing called the EPA food recovery hierarchy. And if you, you know, the, the top thing to do on that hierarchy is reduce food waste. So reduce uh, the source. There's lots of things that's happening in the city. Again, in buffets, for example, serving in small plates instead of large place and, and many other methods. But the big and th kind of probably the most exciting uh, effort is around donating food to people. And the key thing when donating food to people is making sure the food is safe, right? I don't want, if, if I've got high quality food and I'm getting out into the community, I want to ensure that it's not, um, it's not got any um, issues associated with it. There's no risks associated with that food. And so what we've really focused on as we've moved up the hierarchy to food donations is safety. And what safety boils down to, essentially, is keeping hot food hot until you want to start donating it and then getting it cold quickly. And keeping cold food cold, right? So not letting it out into room temperature. So what we've done in the mobile blast chiller that we brought to Verge is, is one example of an innovation we created to help solve the problem of getting hot food cold quickly. And not to get too technical, although I will, I suppose, in a way, um, you need to get hot food from 135 degrees Fahrenheit to 71 degrees Fahrenheit in two hours. So first thing to do from an effective and safe food donation standpoint is make sure you're measuring the temperature of the food that you're collecting. And then two, make sure you get it down to a cool temperature of 71 quickly. And that might, that's pretty easy for, for certain foods, but for things like stews and soups and proteins, it's actually quite difficult. So when we hired food safety experts and worked with our chefs and food safety teams, they all strongly recommended um, blast chilling food. And there are, many commercial kitchens have blast chillers. Um, they're essentially like convection ovens, but for cooling, right? So imagine a convection oven, you, you've got heat, you've got a fan now that accelerates the cooking process, right? In, so a blast chiller is essentially like, like that. Freezer with uh, fans to get the food cold quickly. Now that exists in a stationary um, 
uh, capacity, and there's many around the world, but we understand it didn't, does not exist uh, in a moving vehicle. And so we innovated to bring the blast chiller notion onto a moving truck so the, the, the blast chiller can go to the food and pick it up and cool it down. And we predict that it's going to be a really important um, driver of expansion of food recovery because a lot of people are still concerned about safety. The donation's happening, but many chefs, many, many donors are very concerned about the safety aspect of food donations. And so figuring that out through potentially one tool is a mobile blast chiller could be really helpful. Definitely. Um, what advice would you give to other companies looking to expand their sustainability programs based on you know, what you're doing in the space? Mm -hmm. In my opinion, what the job is, is influencing your organization to do something different that's more environmentally or socially sustainable that but for your existence wouldn't have occurred. So you're an internal change agent and you've got to figure out how to drive, in, drive, how to drive internal change. And so I characterize the role in three main buckets. It's your role as a champion is to initiate new things, but the but for you or your team wouldn't have occurred. Then integrate that practice, that new technology, that new whatever, into the organization so it becomes a normal way of doing the work in a different way than before. And then finally communicate. So effectively communicate at conferences, in media, so that you gain uh, reputational value for your organization and that further helps enhance your ability to initiate new things because the company sees benefit and further helps you integrate the ideas into the company because um, you've made the case. Now let's pivot to that notion. Making the case for whatever thing you, you want, to, want to do um, is complicated because it's not obvious always what the best way to make the case is. So, so the lesson is, you know, don't necessarily always make a moral argument or talk about the environmental problems or social problems and, and assume that will make the case to someone. And don't always use a business argument um, based on finances, because finances, that also might not be compelling to someone you're trying to engage be much more nuanced and really think about the human beings you're interacting with in your organizations and uh, make the change, make the argument for change in a way that's, that works for that individual. Well, thank you so much for coming into Greenville Studio today. We really appreciate you having, having you here. All right, you're welcome, good to be here.